I've got a nice polynomial problem for you guys today from the 2017 Virginia Tech Regional Mathematics Contest. So this is a contest put on by the University of Virginia Tech. And as some of you guys know, I currently live in Virginia actually about an hour and a half or two hours from Virginia Tech. Although I'm not originally from Virginia, I'm from a state called Arkansas. So um, give me a thumbs up or a comment if you're also from Arkansas. So let's maybe look at the statement of this problem. So we wanna have a polynomial f of x in z adjoin x. So that's the ring of polynomials with integer coefficients such that f evaluated at one is negative one f evaluated at 4 is 2, and f evaluated at 8 is 34. And our goal is to find all integers n such that when we evaluate f at n, we get n squared minus 4n minus 18. Okay, so maybe what's the first thing to do here? Well, I think maybe the first thing to do is notice that we have three points on this polynomial. And three points definitely don't determine any polynomial, but they determine a quadratic polynomial. And so what we'll do is find a quadratic polynomial that shares these three points. In other words, that when we evaluate it at one, we get negative one, at four, we get two, and at eight, we get 34. And we're guaranteed to have a quadratic polynomial that goes through those three points, we're not totally guaranteed for it to be in z adjoined x, but as we'll see, it will be. So let's maybe set g of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are yet to be determined. And then let's impose these conditions. g of 1 equals negative 1, g of 4 equals 2, and then finally g of 8 equals 34. But now plugging 1, 4, and 8 into our general form for g will give us a system of linear equations for a, b, and c. Notice we have a plus b plus c equals negative one. From plugging in x equals one, we have 16a plus 4b plus c equals two, plugging four in for x. And then finally we have 64a plus 8b plus c equals 34 from this one right here. Now, there's a bunch of ways to solve this. I would maybe turn this into a matrix which is a pretty appropriate way to do it because this is a college math contest and so you can assume some linear algebra probably. So that's gonna be equivalent to the matrix equation given by 1, 1, 1, 16, 4, 1, 64, 8, 1, times the vector a, b, c equals the vector negative 1, 2, um, 34. And from this point, there are a bunch of ways to solve for A, B, and C. You could maybe turn this into an augmented matrix and do some row reduction, or maybe you could find the inverse of this matrix and multiply both sides by the inverse. So I'll leave it up to you guys to how you wanna solve this exactly, but what you'll end up with is the vector A, B, C is equal to one minus four and two. So like I said, I'll let you guys check that however you wanna solve that system of equations. Okay, so now that we have that taken care of, let's maybe bring that value for A, B, and C up here and we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we motivated why we needed to look at this polynomial G of X, which is X squared minus four X plus two. Now I wanna notice that the x squared term and the x term are exactly the same as this expression down here. So that's something that's maybe important to keep in mind as we move forward. Another thing to recall is that we constructed this so that f of one was equal to g of one, f of four was equal to g of four, and then finally, f of eight was equal to g of eight. But now we can subtract g of one, g of four, and g of eight from both sides of all those equations, and that will give us f of one minus g of one equals zero, f of four minus g of four equals zero, and f of eight minus g of eight is also equal to zero. In other words, 
1, 4, and 8 are roots of the polynomial f of x minus g of x. But if they're roots of that polynomial, that means we can factor the corresponding linear term out of that polynomial. In other words, we have f of x minus g of x is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 8 times a new polynomial, which I'll call p of x. So again, that follows from our construction of g along with these three equations right here. Okay, so now what can we do? Well, now what we would like to maybe do is solve this for f of x. So that's fairly quick. We can say that now f of x is equal to, maybe I'll write it as g of x minus x minus 1, x minus 4, x minus 8 times p of x. And I just noticed that should be plus. I move the g of x over. And then what we want to do is find n, which is an integer satisfying this condition down here. But that means that we can replace f with this quadratic polynomial, and that's actually going to be pretty helpful. So if we replace f of n with this quadratic polynomial, we'll have n squared minus 4n minus 18 equals g evaluated at n, but we know the shape of g of x. That's going to be n squared minus 4n plus 2, and then plus we have n minus 1, n minus 4, and n minus 8 times this polynomial p of x. But we've evaluated that at n. So that's just some sort of number. But now we can see that a bunch of stuff cancels. Notice that this n squared will cancel this n squared. And then this 4n will cancel this 4n. From there, we can move some things around. So let's notice now that we can write n minus 1 times n minus 4 times n minus 8 as 20 times a new polynomial, which is really just minus p of n. So I'm writing it like that just because it's a little cleaner. So notice that tells us that n minus 1 divides 20, just sort of by the definition of divisibility. n minus 4 and n minus 8 also divides 20. So let's write that down. We have n minus 1 divides 20 n minus 4 divides 20, and then finally n minus 8 also divides 20. Okay, so let's bring that condition up and we'll finish it off. So on the last board we determined that the n values that we're going for to solve this question satisfy the following three conditions. n minus 1 is a divisor of 20, n minus 4 is a divisor of 20, and n minus 8 is a divisor of 20. So keeping that, mind, that in mind, we probably want to make a list of all of the divisors of 20. So that's pretty easy to do. We can look at the divisors of 20. Maybe we'll call that A. So this is going to be the set of all divisors of 20. So we can start at the lowest end as minus 20. So notice that divides 20 with a multiplicative factor of minus 1. And then next we have minus 10, minus 5, minus 4, minus 2, 1. And then finally 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So all of those are the divisors of 20. So if n minus 1 is one of those, then that means n minus 1 is an A. If n minus 4 is one of those, then n minus 4 is an A, and the same thing for n minus 8. So we have n minus 1 is an element from A, n minus 4 is an element from A, and then n minus 8 is also an element of A. But now I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation, which is fairly standard. That means that n is in the set 1 plus A. So that's just going to be every element of a plus 1. And then also, n is in 4 plus a. That's going to be every element of a plus 4. And then similarly, n is in 8 plus a. Every element of a plus 8. But being in all three of those tells us that n is in the intersection of 1 plus a with 4 plus a with 8 plus a. So now you can just write down what are all of those sets. So we just take every element of A, we add 1, 4, and 8, 
and then look at what is in common of all three of those sets. And what you will see is that that intersection only contains the numbers three and six. So the only values of n that satisfy our condition we built over here are three and six. And that's a good place to stop.